Hey everyone, welcome back, and today we're here with a new build that I've been playing. So, uh, first of all, I need to say that I got this idea from Manny. Go check him out, he's a streamer. He did a, uh, he solo farmed a headhunter on SSF, which is completely insane. And uh, he did it with a similar build, but uh, obviously I'm on trade and I have uh, other things, so it's gonna, my build is, is different, but go check him out. And the version he uses is extremely budget friendly because he was on SSF. And I'll leave that pay spin from him on the description. So make sure you check that out. I'll leave my own pay spin here as well. Just if you guys want to see the mega invested version. But I just want to say that, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really, really fun build. Use Kinetic Blast and... It's just, yeah, one of my favorite skills in the game. And I want to take a break from bow builds because I've been playing Lightning Arrow and Tornado Shot for so long. I've been magic finding nonstop and I magic found until I farmed the Mage Blood. So, yeah, I, I just farmed a lot, guys, on, on bow builds and I needed a break. And the reason I'm still magic finding is because I need more currency because <laughs> Mage Blood just took all my currency away. So I need to farm more currency uh, with mage blood so that i can play a different build so that's what's happening here <laughs> so yeah um it's been a bit difficult because i haven't had uh as much time as i'd wanted to because i've got uh university work and stuff like that but yeah that's why um there's just it's just been so slow and honestly like the the grind to mage blood was extremely lucky because i dropped some pretty insane stuff uh, i didn't drop anything like headhunter or, or squire i didn't drop anything like that but I got a lot of nurse drops and I got a, lo a lot of lucky corruptions. Like, for example, I hit uh, Corrupted Blood on Secrets of Suffering and that sold for about 13 exalts. I hit a minus lightning scourge on a Doriani prototype, which sold for like 20 exalts. And then the rest of my currency was just drops in general from towers, uh, dropping tons of nurses, tons of maps to resell, tons of wretched cards, and just overall made a complete bucket ton of currency and we are where we at right now so right now I'm a little bit poor but it's kind of fine because i've got the mage blood and the price just keeps going up and up and up and i'm glad i bought it when i did because i'm pretty sure this item's gonna go to like two two mirrors this league or something it's almost there right now i think it's at about 400 exalts which is just completely insane uh, i really yeah I, I don't understand why it's so expensive and uh I'll make a different video probably on Mage Blood uh, afterwards, but yeah. If your magic finding headhunter is definitely better, so don't worry. You definitely want to use a headhunter um, because um, you just spawn a bunch of rares and uh, basically with Beyond, headhunter is honestly the best belt in the game because the Beyond monsters just have really good mods. So yeah, uh, anyway, so what have I been doing? So, uh, I don't know, I'll explain two parts of this video. Uh, one will be what I'm doing to Magic Find and the things that I've tested and what you guys should probably do if you want to make a bunch of currency. And the second thing is my build. So, uh, first off, I'll leave timestamps in the description of, uh, you know, and you'll see it on the video uh, of what you want to see uh, when. So, if you're just interested in the Magic Find part of the video, then you can skip to that. If you're just interested in the build, then you can skip to that. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to go into the magic find. So, um, I've tried a bunch of setups. Uh, I've tried a full quant setup with all quant watchstones. And then I also, uh, you know, that was probably the best setup for just nurse drops in uh, pure. So, I had another one here, a quant watchstone. Um, and you can also go for um, the one that gives increased effect of non-unique map modifiers or something like that. That's probably the best watchstone you can get, but it's four exalts per watchstone which is pretty high but if you're spending so much anyway um you know these ones are three exalts each so it's all uh, dependent on how much you want to spend but um basically at the time i was buying these um i bought these a while ago uh that's all i knew about and um yeah these were these served me really well and i can probably change these watch stones afterwards but i'm not bothered about min maxing the strategy right now because i've actually changed my strategy so I actually got bored of farming these magic find, I mean, just nurses on its own. And um, uh, another thing is uh, what I was doing in those maps, 
so if you see here, I, I bought a bunch of sacrifice fragments and I was just running that because I just hated trading for scarabs. It was really annoying. And it wasn't that I didn't want to invest in my maps. It's just that buying scarabs is just a pain in the head. And I just bought a bunch of sacrifice fragments of TFT and I just, uh, you know, perma ran maps on and on and on and on. I didn't have to trade. I didn't have to do anything. I just completely blasted out maps like those no tomorrow and that's um you know part partially why i was even able to get the mage brothers because i was able to constantly keep playing uh in those times that i did play and um it really really helped because it, my focus was completely on just go in a map finish it come out go in a map you know and the only breaks was to put sextants right so what i did uh, so I put Sacrifice Fragments, four of them, in the map device. Uh, I changed my strategy now, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then I would uh, Prime Sextant everything uh, over here just for extra packs. And if I hit the Un-ID Sextant, then I'd run my uh, Un-ID'd maps over here, which is huge. And you drop way more nurses in those kind of maps because the Quan is just up the roof. But yeah, uh, so why did I get an Auspicious Watchstone and why did I change? So I got mega bored of just farming nurses and I wanted a bit more spice uh, in, in my maps. So what I did, uh, I switched, when I um, got Mage Blood, I switched to a more rarity orientated setup than just pure quantity. Uh, and the reason I did that is because you can run a gold flask uh, with increased rarity. Uh, and if you do this, uh, I'll just show you. We're at 299% rarity and if I take it off, we're 167 so as you can see, it's almost giving me double rarity that I currently have without it, which is insane, right? Like 300% rarity is really, really high. Um, and the reason we're getting that much is because of the increased effect and everything. And uh, I also went for high rarity on my Venters. And because I'm running Mage Blood, I don't need resists um, because I'm running a Bismuth Flask over here. So if you see, without it, my resists are really messed up. So I just went for random Venters, which had 10 quant and high rarity rolls and high life rolls as well. Uh, and then I just ditched uh, all other sources. Okay, so I was us using a um, Great Wolf Talisman, uh, you know, 18% quant, which I feel was really good. But the reason I sold it is because I'm not going to be magic finding for that much longer. And the prices of it is slowly going down. So I want to get rid of it as fast as possible. And Biscuit Skull is honestly just such a good amulet. And uh, the problem was I also had an anoint on the Great Wolf that I needed to change. But Tainted Oils are like two exalts. And I didn't want to spend that much more on the amulet that, you know, is basically going to lose me even more currency so i just had to get rid of it as soon as possible and biscuit's collar is like 1x for the for these type of roles and it's good enough you know um we, there is a lot of white monsters in the map uh, especially from scourge so biscuit's collar doesn't feel that bad to use okay so that is what's happening there i went to a full rarity uh, I started running uh, Scarabs as well. So I started running Rusted Harbinger and I'm probably going to run better ones. But you can buy these in like mega, mega bulk. So that's what I did. And then there's also Rusted Re Reliquary, which is really cheap for some reason compared to the other ones. And uh, you can buy like a hundred for one exalt, which is insane because uh, that's just too much. For... So uh, basically what I did, I bought a bunch of those and I never have to worry about them again. And that's why I did that. Otherwise, I would not use Scarabs. I would still use Sacrifice Fragments. And then as you can see here, I still use two Sacrifice Fragments. Now, you can replace one with an Elder Scarab as well if you want. But yeah, it's completely up to you. So yeah, after switching to the Auspicious Watch Zone, I've really, really been enjoying it. Now, the small Harbingers before only dropped, like, rarely dropped uh, Ancient or uh, Shards and stuff like that. And now they drop a lot of more ancient shards like instead before they were only dropping like one ancient shard randomly now they like frequently drop ancient shards and drop them drop them in twos instead of one and they also drop exalt shards now before they never dropped exalt shards and now the king harbinger drops uh, a lot more ancient shards than before and a lot more exalt shards than before so i really recommend this watch turn it does pay itself back if you play the game enough uh, so i bought that for about five exalts and I've already made, I think, four exalts from, from this watchstone from shards. And I've only had it for, I think, 20 maps or something, right? So it's quite a lot of currency. And uh, the scarab is, uh, the rusted scarab is quite cheap as well. So yeah, that is my current magic finding setup. Uh, and yeah, I'll go into the gear in a second. But yeah, that's all I want to say. Um, the nodes I take on here is the, of course, the, the Valdo ones. Uh, sorry, not Valdo. 
Of course, I take the um, Harbinger ones here, and then uh, we take Delirium. Now, even the Delirium isn't that strong here. This 3% uh, chance to contain a mirror is really, really powerful because if you run a bunch of maps, you'll get a lot of mirrors. And as you can see, I found these orbs just from having that node, and I haven't sold these yet. I sold some before, but this is a really nice amount, and you can get, you know, the ones that are worth a bit more as well. So I really recommend it. Uh, and then the node also gives you some increased... Uh, simulacrum splinters from the bosses which is nice but yeah and then we finally take twice tempted and tamper proof because it just adds strong box on your map and you can combine this with an ambush scarab and then all the strong boxes in the map will be corrupted uh, which is really really nice and rare as well so it's really nice to have that if you want to add uh, scarabs onto your map it's very very flexible um, but ambush scarabs right now are quite expensive so i didn't choose to do that at the moment Okay, um, so if you guys are wondering if you should buy an auspicious watchstone, if it's worth it, I would say it definitely is. I'm not saying you're going to drop loads of mirror shards or anything because they are still really rare. But I will say I know that Steelmage dropped uh, two mirror shards on SSF and he had an auspicious watchstone. So, you know, and he, okay, to give some context though, he does play a lot. He plays a lot of of this game and when he was farming towers he also uh, solo self found uh, or solo self farmed a headhunter and he just farmed an absolute crazy amount of maps in a short amount of time and uh, you know it's quite quite insane to see but yeah um just to let, let you know that uh this all of this is profitable you cannot lose money like don't be afraid to spend currency it, it's just really really powerful Okay, so now let's get into the gear and I'll quickly go over why I chose to go Wanda because I uh, just think I should explain that. So I know you lose quantity and rarity of not going for a Wind Ripper because Wind Ripper obviously has 15% quant and it also has 30% rarity, I believe. Um, so it's really, really good, right? But the thing is, you've got to have fun at the same time. Uh, and I didn't want to farm anymore with bow build. I had, so, I, I was so done with it, guys. I think I farmed like three, four hundred maps as a bow build, and I just didn't want to play anymore. So yeah, that's why I switched to a wanda, and uh, it was really cool. So this wand is turbo cheap to make. You literally just spam an essence of wrath, or well, not spam. You can literally just use one and craft on it, and you're done, right? That's all you have to do. And then the enchant I just found in Harvest and I slapped it on. So, yeah, don't go buying these ones. They're scam. Just go ahead and get an Essence of Wrath and just put it on there and craft something and you're good. You don't need anything else. And this beats Piscator's Vigil or whatever the... I don't know if it's Vigil, but Piscator's Wand, you know, the one that um, a lot of KB uh, players use. And the reason we don't use it is because of the end requirement and Percy... I just think uh, Imbued Ones is better. Even though Piscos does give a lot of attack speed. It's just overall nicer to just get a rare. And not have to worry about the huge int requirement. Because it's 212. And trust me. I go out of my way to get as much int as possible. Okay. Uh, the helmet we just use uh, Devotos with KB enchant. This 75% uh, chance for additional explosion really helps with our clear. And it just explodes the entire screen anyway. And this adds like a chance to additional chance to have an additional explosion which helps even more um and then we use a quant shield here a centauri's answer i think this shield is about 40c but yeah it does give eight percent quant it gives some int as well which is really really useful um it's got some weird stuff with curses if you block i think but it, it's kind of irrelevant you don't really care about that uh and then we use viscous collar as i explained earlier venters as i explained earlier as well and then uh greed's embrace we use because we are greedy uh, so ideally what you want to do if you want to pump out maps as fast as possible is use a queen of the forest, especially if you have mage blood. And uh, you can also opt to choose to uh, ditch the rarity flask for a jade. And you can see the move speed is insane, right? So uh, you can see here that we have 51k evasion, which is completely capping our move speed from queen. But we're greedy, so we don't do that. We're still pretty fast, but we're not, you know, as fast. Um... But yeah, I really do think Greed's is worth it. And I do feel the difference with the with the nurse drops with having uh, Greed's over Queen. And I have tried both setups as well. So I'll just let you guys know that as well. Okay, so uh, then we run a Thunderfist. And you're probably wondering, whoa, why you no run Sedima? Sedima is best glove. 
Uh, and the thing is, um, okay, so I'm running T10 towers, right? Which are actually quite difficult on a Magic Find build. Even with Mage Blood, you'd be surprised to know, even though we're running a Diamond Flask here and we have so much crit, it's unfortunately just not enough damage because our gear is completely just bad. So having just one good piece of gear, which is these gloves, um, now they are a bit insane. They do have attack crit and they have attack speed on the Scourge. And then, you know, it's just really, really good. And we also run a uh, power siphon in here, which, you know, it's kind of up to you. I don't think it's worth it because your KB kind of does enough damage anyway. But if you like to use power siphon like I do, then you can add it in there. But yeah, um, this is what I'm using because I felt like my damage was not high enough. And then when I put these gloves on instead of Sedimas, it made a huge difference, right? Because they also give flat lightning damage to attacks. They give a, some attack speed and they also, also have the um, attack crit on there. Now, I did have a attack crit Sedimas, but I don't know. It just didn't feel that good. And I also run Sniper's Mark on uh, on Spell Slinger here. So I couldn't have an additional curse for Ellie Weakness. And that's why I didn't get Ellie Weakness on the fist. But if you can, uh, you know, fit in Ellie Weakness, then it's up to you. But Sniper's Mark really helps against Beyond Bosses because they're really, really tanky. And it just gives a lot of damage against them. And then finally, we run a Gold Worm. Nothing special. Um, and we just have Max Roll Quant. Now, obviously, you don't need a Mage Blood. And I would consider changing Flask if you don't have Mage Blood. But yeah, you still want a Gold Flask because it's really good. You won't need Bismuth because you'd fix your resist without uh, Bismuth. You'd still want Diamond Flask, you want Dying Sun and Quicksilver. So you'll have additional slot for maybe a Life Flask or something else up to you. Um, and yeah, we get Onslaught from Graceful Assault, so we don't need that. Okay, so that is pretty much the gear covered. I'll cover the tree briefly. Um, so I am running two Inspired Learnings because we have space for it. Uh, and I think it's really worth it because combined with Mage Blood, two Inspired feels really, really good. Um, like any mods that we get just, yeah, it just carries all the damage that we'd ever need. And, um, I think you guys should try it out. So I'm not going to explain this too much. Um, but we are running Wrath, Precision, Spell Slinger with Sniper's Mark and Grace. And the way we're running all these auras and Precision is also level 21. The, the way we can do this is by running, um, Charisma and then we take the, uh, influence as well which gives a uh, reservation efficiency here and it also gives us reservation efficiency on the mastery so we're running a lot of that and then on top of that we're also running precision reservation efficiency and we're also running grace reservation efficiency so when you have all those components you're able to run all those auras without an enlighten which is really really strong and i highly recommend that you guys do that we run a high level precision, even though our accuracy is really, really high. Like, I think I could even disable precision. Okay, no, I couldn't, but um, we basically have a very, very high um, uh, hit chance because we take acuity and we take de depth perception. Um, and yeah, we just have a lot of uh, room to work with if we didn't want to run a high level precision. But the reason we do is because it also gives crit chance, which is really important. And even though we have a lot of crit chance from the diamond flask, we still would want more. Okay, so we go here, we take the move speed. Um, now, the reason I path here instead of the life is because of the increased effect of flasks. And with mage blood, that's really strong because we're scaling uh, flask effect a lot. So uh, you can go for the life if you don't have mage blood, that's fine. Uh, and then we go here. Now, the reason we have to take the nodes here. Um, is simply because of um, inspired learning. So the reason I don't take the, the frenzy charge is because I don't have frenzy charge generation and I'm not running blood rage because the degen feels really bad since I can't run a life flask. So that's why I personally don't go for blood rage and frenzy charges. Then we go here and take the pierce. This is all that you'd ever need for clear and you can run six damage gems in your KB. And the reason you can do this is because you get uh, two projectiles from Endless Munitions, and then you also get an additional one from the Wand Mastery, which is completely insane. Uh, so we have, you know, four projectiles here, which is really comfortable. And with Dying Sun, uh, we have, you know, six total, which is really, really nice. So uh, I really don't think you need any more clear. You don't need GMP and you don't need Chain. So you, as you can see, all of these are all damage. Awaken added Lightning, increased crit damage, Awaken Lightning Pen, Elemental damage with attacks, so I didn't get awakened one yet, and uh, divergent inspiration with the mana. 
So something you'll notice with the build is the man is a bit annoying. So what I do is get a replica conqueror's efficiency and I run divergent inspiration and that does the job. Uh, but you don't need that. It's just to make it feel a bit better. And then we take this uh, cluster here. Now um, you don't have to take this cluster, but it is a lot of damage. Um, and then if you don't take the cluster, then you want to take clever thief because you need the leech. Uh, we take this for the flask effect again, because uh, we're scaling flask effect and uh, it feels really nice to have that. And this scales, you have to remember for Mage Blood, it scales everything. So it scales my move speed, it scales my crit, it scales my resist, but I don't need that. And it scales my rarity as well. So it's really, really important for me to make sure I'm scaling flask effect. And then uh, we go here, we take reduced elemental damage taken, a uh, reflected elemental damage taken. And then we also uh, go on the uh, Pantheon and take Soul of Yugal to get um, basically full uh, immunity to reflect. So we can run corrupted maps that have reflect on them, no problem, uh, which is really, really nice. And then we go up here and we take another inspired with uh, one with evil corrupted blood. Um, and then we go here and we take all of, you know, the four notables here. And then we take ghost stance. Now we only have a little bit of ES, but it's, you might as well take it when you're here. Uh, and then we just go up and we take, you know, reservation damage and all of that. So yeah, and then for the uh, Ascendancy, we just have Focal Point because we're using Sniper's Mark. This actually makes us quite a bit tankier because there's always a mark on the ground near us. We have Gathering Winds, of course, Far Shot. Uh, everything off screen just dies instantly. And then Endless Munitions for two additional projectiles, which is very essential if you don't want to run GMP. So yeah, that is pretty much um, my setup right now. And I'll show you guys um, how I roll my maps and... Um, that's basically the last part and then I'll show you the gameplay. So uh, what we're doing here, so I go to my maps. Now I sustain uh, these maps on my own. I don't buy these maps. So the way I sustain them is you uh, chisel. Like chisels are so cheap and you should over sustain chisels if you're on your filter. So it should be really easy for you to get that. Then what you want to do is you scour out until you hit minimum 25% pack size. So this can take a few times and you're probably wondering, oh, is it worth it to do this? And it definitely is. You really need to scour out until you hit uh, like a decent pack size because pack size scales immensely with Scourge. And if you don't scale your pack size, you are going to be losing currency on your maps. Okay. So this is a perfect example of a map that you'd want. Uh, and then what you want to do is Val Orbit. Now, if you don't have many maps and you're just starting to sustain them, then don't Val Orbit. But if you have loads of maps lying around, it's Valorb. So if you don't hit anything on the Valorb and it's under 30% pack size, I would just put it in the Scourge. And then I would uh, only keep and don't Valorb 30% plus simply because they're actually quite good 30%. And I don't think it's worth Valorb because Valorb can turn it into another map. It can brick it and it can stay the same. So I think it's not really worth it. Um, just to get, you know, I think 40% pack size for a Valorb with a, I think it's a 1 in 4 or 1 in 5, which I don't think is worth it unless you're swimming in maps, which I'm not currently because I'm just starting to sustain T10s. Okay, so why am I running T10s and do you need to run T10s? So you don't need to run T10s and I would only run T10s if you have a Mage Blood or a Headhunter because the map is very difficult um, and I would stick to T3s or T6s. And the only reason to run T10 is simply so you can actually drop a Mage Blood or a Headhunter because their eye levels are restricted. And uh, I really just wanted to have that as an opportunity. So because I, I, I've i always like it's really exciting to to drop something like that or have the potential to drop something like that in every map. It gives me more spice to the map in that way. So, yeah, that's why I'm running T10s. But I ran the majority. I farmed the Mage Blood on T3 towers uh on my you know my budget ts uh character or lightning arrow character which i had as well so that's what i was doing before and there's plenty of videos on that you can check out so much channel for lightning arrow and tornado shot is very similar and uh you know there's all of that so i'm a bit lazy i don't run prophecies that much but you want to roll them uh you know they're not really hard to roll uh, and i do activate them when i remember but yeah, there's a bunch of prophecies that are good and you can find that information on Soma's channel as well because he has a bunch of that going on there. But yeah, um, what I'll do is I'll run a map now and uh, by the way, all the resources you need will be in the description. So if you guys just need to get 
uh, started on Magic Find, I'll leave a video. If you guys, that's not from me. Uh, and if you guys want to check out Manny's Twitch, he has a lot of useful information and he's SSF and he farms and makes more currency than a lot of trade league players, which is really insane, but he does play a lot as well. Um, but, th you know, he knows what he's doing, so it it's just really cool to see and you learn a lot from watching his streams. And then, um, yeah, any anything you need will be in the description down below. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, join my Discord uh, and comment there or you can comment in the YouTube comments down below. All of that will be in the description as well. Um, and yeah, let's go into the map showcase. Uh, and I'll probably just put some music over because it's going to be... I think a map takes me like three to four minutes. Okay, so the way you want to sustain your map is before you launch it. Um, of course, you put Beyond. They, they are actually part of sustaining a map. So you want to launch your map. And once these sextant uses get used, you want to take out two watchstones. So the reason you want to do that is because the game... Uh, snapshots the map uh, as all the watchstones being in once you open the map and then when you take the watchstones out after it's been snapshot uh, basically the map can drop uh, you know t10 tower maps and that's how you sustain it so every time you run a map you want to run the map with all the watchstones take out two watchstones for the t10 and if you're running lower tier then take out as many watchstones as you need to to get to the tier that you want to sustain you run the map and then you put the watchstones back in after the map is done to run the next map and you repeat. This will basically make it possible to drop T10 towers or T whatever tower you're trying to sustain uh, regularly in the maps. Um, but I will say the higher tier you go, the more juice you need to sustain the map. So if you just want to sustain T3 towers, um, it's it, you, know, you don't need to juice your maps as much as I am, even though I'm not even juicing my maps that much. Um, but yeah, if you don't have enough juice, you will not sustain. So I just um, thought I'd say that um, just to let you guys know.
All right, guys, that is a map showcase. Now, something you guys need to understand is that you are going to have unlucky streaks and you just need to just keep going. And I promise you it will pay off, right? Like I've gone, you know, maybe 20, 25 maps without a nurse. And then sometimes I've got two maps in a row that dropped nurses and exalts you know in this you know in a very short amount of time so you guys just need to keep going with it there is a lot of variance you can get unlucky and you can get lucky and uh, overall um, that's just how it's going to go and it's the same with all the content like the you know the harbingers as well sometimes they're going to drop nothing sometimes they're going to drop loads of exalt shards and ancient shards there's a lot of variance and that's just how the game is so make sure you guys just keep going with whatever strategy that you're doing uh, and it should be good. So these are the typical results from a map. So we got uh, three divine orbs here um, total. If we sell the six inks, we got five C, which pays back the beyond, which I get five C quite a lot. Um, we get all these random currencies. We get um, you know a lot of scours. No um, alchemy this time, but there is variance in the loot as well. So yeah, um, it's really nice to be able to sustain beyond. And uh, if you get a mirrored uh, you know six ink, make sure you don't vendor them together. Vendor them one by one so you don't turn it into a chance orb. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, you know, the loot. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you guys are doing as well. If you guys are magic finding, if you guys are curious about magic finding. And I'll try my best to answer any questions that you guys have. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.